When it comes to the winter season in the Northern Hemisphere, there's usually one constellation that reigns supreme, the constellation of Orion. And tonight I'm going to be photographing its signature nebula. I took a photo of this for the first time three years ago, and we'll see if I can make some new improvements this year. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I revisit Messier 42, also known as the Orion Nebula. My name is Kwesi Akwa, and welcome to the Astro Park. Messier 42, or the Orion Nebula, is a diffuse nebula located in the constellation of Orion at a distance of 1,344 light years away from Earth. The first discovery of the nebula was credited to the French astronomer Nicolas Claude Fabry de Perez on November 26, 1610. Charles Messier observed the nebula on March 4, 1769, and also noted the small cluster of four stars in the core of the nebula, known as the trapezium. He added the nebula to the Messier catalog as M42. At 24 light years across, and having a mass of 2,000 solar masses, the Orion Nebula is one of the brightest nebulae in the night sky and is visible to the naked eye. It's also one of the closest star-forming regions to Earth, with observations revealing approximately 700 stars in various stages of formation within the nebula. So to photograph M42, I'll be using the Orion Eon 104EDX2 triplet apochromatic refractor telescope. And for imaging, I'll be using my trusty one-shot color CMOS camera, the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. And as usual, this will all be mounted on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG. And to help minimize the light pollution, as well as maintain the natural colors, I'll be using the Optolong L Quad Enhance broadband light pollution filter. So, with all that being said, let's head outside, take a walk in the park and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the Orion Nebula. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I've completed my setup procedures for my equipment and my imaging session for the Orion Nebula is currently in progress. So you can cleanly see M42 near the center of the frame. And there's also two additional nebulae in the field of view. So this small ball of nebulosity right in the center where my cursor is, that is Messier 43, or Damarian's Nebula. And it's a little bit faint to see, but over here to the left is a reflection nebula known as NGC 1977, or the Running Man Nebula. 
So for tonight's session, I'm going to be taking a particular image of M42. And this usually applies to bright objects, such as the Orion Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, and I also recently noticed this on the Dumbbell Nebula. So if you look at the core region of M42 right here, where my cursor is, that is the trapezium section. And in this single three minute exposure, the core features are overexposed and blown out. So what we can do to fix this is by taking what's known as a HDR or high dynamic range image of M42. So how that works is I'll be taking a series of long exposures for the structure of the nebula. Then I'll supplement that with a small handful of short exposures for the core. Then I'll stack all those images together. And then in PixInsight, I'll run the HDR multi-scale transform tool to help pull out those core details a little bit better. So tonight I'll be taking a series of three minute exposures for the structure and a small handful of one minute exposures for the core. And then I'll put those together to create the HDR image. And I got a head start on this a couple nights ago, last Saturday. I was able to grab about two hours and 35 minutes of data that night. I got two and a half hours of three minute exposures, followed by five minutes of one minute exposures. So I'm hoping to grab that same amount of data tonight and possibly a bit more if the battery power on my computer allows for that. So yeah, apart from that, everything seems to be going according to plan. So as per usual, I'll continue to monitor the imaging session and we'll just see how the night progresses. Okay, so here's a quick update for all of you. It's a little after 10.30 and I slewed over to the Flame Nebula to do a quick focus check on Alnatec, the bright star on top of the nebula. And I also had to do a Meridian flip as well as recalibrate the mount. So everything is back to normal now and I've come back to the Orion Nebula to continue the imaging session. So, as I mentioned earlier, diffuse nebulae, such as the Orion Nebula, are usually the birthplace of new stars. And I emphasize the word new since we're already one month into the new year, 2024. So, personally for me, one of the new things that I would like to learn is the third discipline of astrophotography. I've had experience doing solar system and deep space astrophotography, but this third discipline is known as nightscapes. In nightscapes, you can take wide field images of either the constellations, star trails, and photos of our Milky Way galaxy during the summer and winter. Although you can use a dedicated astrophotography camera, people tend to use DSLRs or mirrorless cameras on top of a star tracker, which makes nightscapes a great entry point for beginner astrophotographers since you may already own those type of cameras. And the constellation of Orion is a great candidate for a nightscape photo, because not only can you take a wide field image of all of the stars, you can also photograph the entire Orion molecular cloud complex, which includes the Orion Nebula, the Horsehead Nebula, the Flame Nebula, the Witch Head Nebula, and Barnard's Loop, just to name a few. I've already started doing some research on this, and 
hopefully with enough experience, I hope to share my initial results with you either in a future video or on the community tab. So, do you have any astrophotography New Year's resolutions? Let me know about them in the comment section down below. And I hope that 2024 will be a successful year for you. Hey everybody, so I was able to complete my imaging session tonight and I'm about to wrap things up. I was able to capture two hours and five minutes of data tonight on the Orion Nebula. So I got two hours worth of three minute exposures and five minutes of one minute exposures. And putting that together with what I did last Saturday I think I should have enough data to create a pretty good HDR image. So all that's left on my checklist is to shoot my calibration frames. Then once I finish that, I can just pack everything up and go home. So thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy the image of the Orion Nebula at the end of this video. And as always, until next time, take care, and I wish you all clear skies.